The number one question after this morning's show was, well, where is the magnetic pole now? We showed the rapid acceleration of the North Magnetic Pole, traveling more in the last 20 years than the previous 160, or the previous 1,000 years for that matter. But since the data stopped at 2019 in the ESA video, I pulled both the NOAA and the Japanese data, and they show the same thing. The Magnetic Pole has continued racing towards Russia. This is one-third of the story of Earth's ongoing magnetic pole shift, the rapid acceleration of movement from Canada northward and across the Arctic Ocean, heading towards Siberia and eventually the Indian Ocean. The second part of the story is the South Magnetic Pole, moving more slowly right now but way ahead in terms of their common meeting place, again the Indian Ocean, with only about 50% of the distance to travel as the Northern Magnetic Pole. And as we saw last year, the South Magnetic Pole is speeding up. Each of those dots is one year of motion, and so their greater spacing and separation of light indicates an acceleration of the Southern Magnetic Pole too. Of course, the third and most important aspect of the pole shift is the weakening of the overall global magnetic field. This is actually what shows up the most in the historic data. It is happening now, and it's the scary part of the shift. Let's look at why that is. The weaker magnetic field lets in more cosmic rays, both from the sun and from the galaxy. These charged particles can have tremendous impacts on several elements of the Earth's system, including the ozone, where depletion due to increased cosmic rays is expected to amplify ultraviolet light penetration to the surface, something that has repeatedly been shown to be one of the causes of plant and animal losses during these magnetic pole shifts. They have definitive and well-studied impacts on our brains as well, including a loss of cognitive power, an amplification of panic and anxiety reactiveness with emotional instability, Boy, if that doesn't describe today's world, what does? But these cosmic rays also have impacts across the central nervous system and on the cardiac system, especially in terms of heart attack, stroke, blood pressure, and heart rate. It can actually mess with metabolic and ion-mediated processes in all biological life, which further explains why these magnetic pole shifts are so scary when they let in that extra energy from space. The highest energy particles penetrate into the crust and mantle and excite silica-rich magma, which is why amplified volcanic activity seems to accompany every magnetic pole shift in the geologic record. It has a tremendous impact on clouds as well, due to the cosmic ray particle nucleation and the ambient electrification, which attracts water vapor to dust in the sky, helping to churn up those clouds. Of course, the magnetic pole shift is also going to affect animal navigation. It's most commonly known in birds, but it spans much more broadly. From migration to foraging to finding mating zones, marine creatures and mammals are now well known to be impacted, as well as several species of insects and even plants. From seed to germination to flowering, both charged particles and magnetic fields can impact their processes. All of the foregoing reasons are why, as is demonstrated in several papers, there are major biosphere impacts and extinctions during these magnetic pole shifts on Earth. For more, please check out the Earth Disaster video. It is linked for you below, and it explains the bigger picture of what's happening, and it's actually happening throughout the solar system, with cultural and political impacts far beyond those we briefly mentioned here. Whenever you're watching, I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.